expecting revenue. We're now being recorded, so behave yourselves, please. He's threatening to put it out on YouTube, so we, everyone, everyone in the world might see you being naughty. So, okay. Um, brief history of LinkedIn for those that don't know, just skip through this really quickly. Uh, it was formed back in 2003 in America by four people in the HR industry. Uh, it crawled across into the UK in May uh, 2004. It, Actually, it was 18 in May this year. Uh, so happy 18th birthday to LinkedIn in May this year. 2008, they decided to set up an office in the UK. Then the mixed major point was um, 2011, 2012. A lot of the larger companies decided that as it was growing into a, what is a massive database, that they could use it for more than just being an online CV. And like anything else, the big companies started it. Um, and then we actually adopted it and then 2016 Microsoft decided they wanted to look at look in the sofa and the uh, executive lounge and found 26.2 billion pound and decided to buy LinkedIn so it is a Microsoft owned product uh, since then they made some changes I'm not saying that all of them I liked but um, the general interface was uh, improved and then the final thing as far as I'm concerned um, Around about 2018, it got really serious and it was no longer deemed to be social media in with Facebook and Instagram and all that. Yes, there is an element of social media on LinkedIn, I will not deny that, but tend to find that social media specialists do not specialize in LinkedIn. They have an, an overview in it. Uh, yeah, 756 million users. Um, LinkedIn claimed 200 countries. There's a problem with that. There aren't 200 countries in the world, so I've dumbed it down a little bit and put it at 190. Um, and yeah, it's still growing. Uh, three new accounts added per second. Uh, so yeah, the 756 million was up to date when I typed it, but it's already out of date. In this country, yeah, there's a, just over 31 million uh, users. But like the 756, not every single account is active. Um, not everyone's on it all the time. But, you know, with 31.2 million people in this country, majority of business people, certainly the management director at owner level, have got a presence on LinkedIn. So if you're not on there, you're not talking to those people. So, yeah, top tips for business, because we're all uh, wanting to spend less time on LinkedIn. We get better results. And that's what I, um, I work with my clients to do. If you can spend an awful lot of time on LinkedIn and actually end up getting nowhere, uh, getting kind of frustrated with it. The first thing you need to do is consider this because, yeah, as I mentioned, it's a database and therefore defining your keywords is quite important. I've actually introduced this into my training of my clients as a separate entity. Uh, it's all about looking on LinkedIn, putting a search, just put a search for what you do into the LinkedIn search box. You know, and see how many other million people do what you do. They means you're swimming in very large ponds. So most of people have to probably uh, get to a third um, word in their keywords. For instance, mine, you know, LinkedIn profiler, there are over 3,000 in the world. So that's not too bad. But if you're an accountant, yeah, put that in there and see how many million people you come back with. So getting those defined keywords, look at what areas you specialize in. Um, but yeah, we talked about avoiding the seven second syndrome, which is what I uh, sort of said that this was going to be about. Now, seven second syndrome is what the marketing gurus tell us is the average attention span of a gnat. Oh, no, sorry, I meant me gnat, I meant a human being. Yeah, apparently when people look at your website, they will take seven seconds to decide whether they're going to engage with it or they're going to go and look at someone else's. It's not long and you need to engage them pretty quickly. Forgetting, don't forget, you know, even if we get some really smart keywords, there are going to be other people in the searches. Uh, and they so they could Tinder you, they could swipe you and go and look at the next person. Uh, so that we don't want to do. And the next person could be a competitor. So no, you need to avoid the seven second syndrome. So how do we go about that? Get the top of your profile engaging. So this is a snapshot of mine, and it's probably, yeah, it's a few, it's a few months out of date, but it generally gives you the idea. Um, 
The four elements that they look at is the banner across the top, large visual area. I personally think people are visually orientated, so um, it's the first thing they see. A headshot, yeah, the good old headshot, uh, highly controversial. Everyone sort of has their own opinion on it. Uh, we'll come to a bit more about that in, in a minute. Your headline, yeah, that's changed. So those of you that have got just your job title, hopefully by the end of this, I will have told you uh, why you need to change that. And then, yeah, the about section. Uh, and as you can see there at the bottom, there's a dot, dot, see more. So realistically, those five or seven seconds are getting people to tick all the boxes that when they get to that dot, see more, they actually want to go and see more. They actually want to click on there and find out more about you. If you don't engage them, the likelihood is they are going to be off in seven seconds and going to possibly one of your main competitors. So you need to ensure the banner tells your story. So something like this, and I haven't changed this because I can't be bothered to, but this was the old generic LinkedIn background. And not that long ago, they I think they brought an intern in and they made it all very pastely, very pretty. Yeah, it didn't change the functionality one bit, um, and it still was possibly the worst thing you can do, because if someone lands on link, your LinkedIn profile and, and they are met by just the bland, boring background, which tells people nothing, then you possibly might not even get seven seconds of their time. They might decide already to go somewhere else, because you're looking in that banner to also confirm to the people that they're in the right place. So if they put a search in for what you do, and you come up in the search results, good thing in the first place, and they come on your banner. They just need to make sure that they are in that right place. Um, so this is a gentleman um, who I know well, and yeah, his banner now tells people very quickly that he's a WordPress web developer. He goes on to give us a bit more detail, but I know instantaneously if I'm looking for help with my WordPress website, then this is a guy that possibly could help me. Yeah, the professional headshots only. Uh, there's going to be some creatives in the room. I know at least one I, I saw in, the, in the, the room before we started who might have a different opinion to me on this one, which is great. I love opinions. Um, we all thought the same thing. What a boring world this would be. But I have to say, you know, if these headshots are similar to what you've got, then I don't think they work. Um, that room's open. What are people's opinion of the one on the left hand side, the gentleman? Why don't I not like that? What, what do people got to, got to say about that? Because I can't actually see the chat. So, Ben, if there's uh, anything in there, um, and you're on mute, Ben, by the way, so I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, please don't make me do this. I don't want to do this to you. But there we go. I'm off mute. Um, so, Warren has said, not smiling. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, Tracy has said background is um, taking up too much of the space and it's messy. Aoife has said hands in pocket, too casual. Yeah, I love the last one because that is the first thing. I'm old fashioned. Someone that just that just turns me off straight away. But you're right. Yeah, this this is um, I, I actually think this guy probably was at a hotel in a wedding reception out in the mm. garden. Um, just had a picture taken and he decided to use it on his profile. So yeah, messy background, big no. Yeah, if you're looking at this on your phone, are you actually going to be able to see what he looks like? Because he's full length, you can't uh, zoom in. Yeah, it just doesn't work for me. The hands in the pocket, yeah, a complete no, no. Um, so yeah, that that's just puts me off straight away. Now the one on the right, slightly different, but again, why do I not like this and why do I not think this works? What are people's opinions on that? I'll, I'll tell you what, you can tell that Warren is a creative, can't you? Um, he's yeah. coming up with all the good ideas. Um, so Warren has said not, not saying anything. Mark has said not pers personal. Tracy has said too generic, um, not personal enough. And I've said people buy from people. Yeah, so exactly. We are looking at a LinkedIn profile of a person, an individual. It's a personal profile platform. So, I mean, it, it could have just been a company logo and some people use that. And again, this is a no-no. So you're starting to guess, you know. I guessed 
potentially it could be an optician a pair of glasses on there but actually there's a clue on there and if any of you are film buffs you might recognize that it's the kingsman logo and galahad is a character from kingsman this profile does not belong to that actor i can tell you and the person it does belong to has got nothing to do with that particular film so i, I don't know what the hell they were trying to achieve there so yeah massive massive no um but these two yeah these can form um, one was a professionally taken photograph, one was done on an iPhone at home. But they both tick the box, plain background, head and shoulders, bit of a smile, because again, you want to look as though you're approachable. So if you don't take a good photograph and you really struggle with it, perhaps you might need to go and talk to a professional photographer. My issue when I had my photo shoot was that I couldn't stop laughing because uh, I got on so well with them. Um, uh, but most people, it's they just sort of go, have you even finished yet yeah um we need to look approachable uh, and that's the main thing so along those lines and i know the creators in the room will say well yeah but as you see both these people they just reasonably casually we don't expect to see shirts and ties these days um it's no longer a prerequisite unless of course you're a high fluting lawyer in which case some people i network with still turn up in ties on zoom meetings not that often Okay, so yeah, your headline is not your job title. This is um, a hangover from the days when it was an online CV at the end of the day. Um, so example, very bad example is, you know, regional director at the Alpha Group International. Yeah, okay, so what is it you can do for me? Because ultimately the people looking at your profile, yeah, they're that old cliche, what can you do for me? But that's what they're thinking. They've, they've come onto your profile, you know, what is it? That you could possibly do for them uh so your regional director yeah um i don't know what the alpha group international does i understand why a lot of people have still got it uh, because ultimately they haven't changed it they don't know what to do you haven't had that email from linkedin that says oh by the way ladies and gentlemen your uh, headline is now 220 characters long please feel free that's about three to three and a half lines so you can add stuff to it so something like this is now what I teach my clients to do. Tell people what you do. You can have your job title in there, but consider this because the headline and your headshot follow you around LinkedIn. So when you go and look at someone's profile or when you go and post a comment or make a comment on someone's post, should I say, you leave behind this. So why not let's turn it into something of a little advert for ourselves. So, I say, you know, why not ask a question where your ideal client would say yes to? So mine's pretty simple. 80% of my clients want to generate, generate more leads from LinkedIn. So yeah, my question is, would you like to generate more leads from LinkedIn? I then follow it up with a credibility statement, mine being that I've been doing this for 15 years. And then I also say to people, it's also good to put some outcomes in there as well. You know, mine is all about spending less time and getting better results. The sort of things that people want out of it. So, you know, um, He's done it, you know, and he's actually gone one stage further. And I said to him, if you've got space, you can put a call to action at the end of it. Um, and, and he's done exactly that, uh, book a call, etc. So that works. He's used the 220 characters. It follows him around. If people see this and they're interested in uh, WordPress websites, they will click on and gum through to his profile to hopefully be met by that lovely banner. Because it's the same person I used a banner from earlier. So they will know immediately, here's that WordPress guy. So it works on so many different levels. And the last thing is, yeah, the first three lines of your about section, they're visible. Any device, doesn't matter what it is, if, you know, it's Windows, laptop, it doesn't matter. But there's a dot, dot, see more at the end of the third line. Now, I'm not too sure if we've got any website people in the room, but they will tell you that a good website, again, talks to the viewer. It's about the viewer. It's exactly the same with the first three lines of your LinkedIn profile. You want people to engage. You want them to push the see more button that's in on the end of the third line. So continue to ask those questions. Again, for example, mine could be long lines, you know, are you on LinkedIn? We're just frustrated, not too sure how to handle connection requests. How much posts should I be doing? When should I be doing them? Ah, yeah, all the sort of things I know that my clients have issues with. So when they get to the end of the third line and they see the see more, they push push it because they need to know more information so that's why the top three lines are really really important if you've got the i stuff in there and 
85% of the time when I do this with people, I win my virtual five pound bet because the word I appears in those first three lines. Quite often it's the first word. And I say to them, move it down to the fourth line. The top three need to be about me, the viewer, because I want to know what you can do for me. Get me interested. Then I will click the see more button. Then, yeah, it's over to you. So again, you know, do you want to save money and time? Da, 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 all those questions. And then, you know, a little bit of uh, as a cost expert, I work with businesses and all sizes and, and I need to know more. So I'm going to push the see more button. That's what I'm looking for. That's why I found the person in the search. This is what's going to get me to look at the whole profile. So yeah, your about section, it must inform. You didn't get the email, did you, about the increasing characters on the about section? So for many years, it was 2,000 characters. It moved up to 2,600 not that long ago. Um, actually, probably is actually a year ago now. It seems to be a, a while ago. So you've got 2,600 characters. Um, what I say to people is, after those first three lines, which is you know, talking to the person, then it's, it is then a bit about yourself. What constitutes a successful one? Yeah, tell people a bit about what you do, what you've achieved, but also make it readable. Just don't have 2,600 of continuous text. Put some page breaks in there, you know, as this gentleman, put some bullet points in there. Okay, he's on a Mac, so he's got all the little fancy icons. Um, fine, it doesn't matter. If you're on Windows, it's not, it's not an issue. Don't try and do it in third-party software and import it because it completely screws up the analytics and everything. Okay, so don't do that. Um, and the one thing he's got wrong, and I deliberately left this in here, um, he's at the bottom, he's got some, you know, as we can see, he's, he has got some uh, bullet points in there. But when you get to the bottom, you need a call to action. So someone's spent two or three minutes reading your about section. They're engaged. They like the fact that what you've achieved, you've told them um, what the services are. Actually, another um, set of bullet points, which is really possibly even better is, What's the benefits of working with you? Because again, I'm looking for why I should engage with you. So if you tell me these are the benefits, that might be really useful. But as you can see just above, a testimonial. Yeah, a bit of social proof because ultimately you're telling me what you do, how you go about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then someone is just saying, yeah, you really are good at what you do. It just elevates the whole of your profile. I start to believe what you say more because you've been given social proof. Then right at the bottom, I've read it. I'm interested, what's my next move? What's my next step? And there's so many people's uh, profiles I look at where there's nothing there. Or like this one, he's gone too far. Because ultimately, um, I'm really sad saying this, but people just don't ring like they used to. You know, you might answer the phone, I might have to talk to you. Oh my God, that's a bit scary. I don't like doing it. He's put in um, a booking. Yeah, you can put in a booking link. That's not a problem. But for me, the one that works the most and what most people are happy doing is just ask them to email. So it could be, you know, for a free 15-minute consultation with me, email me at blah, blah, blah. Put it in capital letters. We're not on social media, as I said before. You're not shouting at people. You're just making it very clear that they want to go to the next step. This is what they need to do. And if you tell them, my God, they might just go and do it. So your about section might have got you an email, but that could become a lead. It could become, you know, could become a client. But yeah, if you design the about section um, to be like that, give them a call to action, put some social proof in there, make it very clear, put the benefits in there, then yeah, you've got far more chance of people actually engaging with you. Yeah, um, as I say, bad example, it's I, I this, I that, um, realistically, you, you don't want to be seeing the word I in there at all. Um, I actually need to change this slide because don't forget to use the new feature section. It's not, it's not new anymore. It's been around for a while, but I still come across a lot of people that don't have it. Now, what they've brought in is this feature section. Um, now some of you might have seen this on the old about sections that you could actually uh, have some uploads and some links added to the bottom of, of your about section. Not everyone saw that. I think mainly because they put it just below where you put the free text in there. And then you went to the bottom and saved it before you lost it. And you just missed the fact that those things are in there. Well, they've removed that. And they now brought in this new uh, section. I, say, I keep saying new, it's not that new. But because I still see a lot of people haven't got it, I still refer to it that way. 
So at the top of your um, profile, you'll see um, add section. So this is one of the sections that they've added. So this basically is things that Microsoft have brought in um, over and above the original LinkedIn profile that they uh, have fallen into. But there's a few other things in there as well. It's worth, worth looking at that. In fact, they just changed it recently. Again, it must have been an intern because they changed it from add profile section to add section. Wow, that was well worth the update that was, wasn't it? Yeah. So there, but it's the feature section really is, is quite useful. Uh, it sits just below your about section. And actually, with something I'm going to talk about later, it's becoming uh, a bit more relevant. Um, what you can add in the features section when you've discovered it uh, is you'll see that there's a, a plus button up here. There's four, th there's four types of things you can add. You can add a post in there. You can add an article. You can put uh, some links in there and you can put media in there as well. And what I say to people is that I don't tend to put much in the way of posts on there because posts need to be of the moment. So pinning them in the feature section doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. Yeah, articles. If you're doing an article, great way of keeping it in people's eyes is to pin it into here. I would definitely think very seriously about putting a link into your website in here because it's contained within this particular engine on LinkedIn, which means that when people go from here to the website, when they finish the website, they come back into LinkedIn. So LinkedIn are really happy with that. If you put a link into free text, it takes people away and they don't come back and LinkedIn get a little bit upset and have a little bit of a hizzy fit, to be honest with you. Um, on the media and uploads, you can add video in there. You can add PDFs. You can add a few, you know, all different things. I kind of thinking that I would always expect to see a link to a website. It'd be nice to see a video in there um, and then certainly an article. You can add quite a few in there. I say to people, as you can see from this, this screen grab here, depending on the size of the screen, but you're going to see two to three. So I wouldn't bother doing much more than maybe four or five. You get some indexing for it. So you're getting more indexing towards getting a nice score from LinkedIn. But ultimately, don't get too carried away. Uh, people are not going to use the scroll buttons, which you see. Um, they're going to look at what's there. Uh, and actually, this button here is, in again, anywhere you see the 45 degree pencil uh, on LinkedIn, it's the edit button, which means in this particular case, you can reorder stuff. So when you add something to it, it always puts it at the beginning. And if you don't want it there, you can reorder it. Um, so you can make, again, you can make the order what you want, not what uh, LinkedIn has dictated to you. And yeah, be active will fade away um, very much. We need to be Consistent on LinkedIn, but maybe not too consistent. I'll well, come to that in a second. So yeah, what sort of activity? Yeah, posts, it's kind of the main thing that people do on LinkedIn. Um, it uh, constitutes majority of the activity on there. Articles, yeah, articles, getting a bit of a bum deal. The reach on articles isn't that great, but there are ways around of making them quite uh, useful. Downloads, yeah, downloads. And this is, this is a little button on LinkedIn. When you say, so when you start a post and you've got, um, you can see there is a little icon for an image and a little icon for a video. And the next to it is this little art, this little um, document, download document. What it means is that if you go in there uh, and choose it, it asks you whereabouts is this document on your computer. You point it at it, it brings it in there. But when it comes through people's feeds, they can just hit, the button and it downloads it directly onto their desktop okay so if you're advertising uh, an event so you've got a fact sheet or something like that that you want people and also going back to that lovely word reach you get increased reach by doing it so go and discover the documents downloads part of things um yeah the other thing is groups yeah i freely admit that groups aren't what they used to be um that was part of the LinkedIn changes that I did not agree with. Uh, most of the LinkedIn trainers didn't either because they did chop a lot of uh, functionality out of it. Um, one thing being mainly is that it wasn't being forwarded forward into people's feeds. Uh, therefore, if you put a discussion, something in there, people weren't seeing it. So a lot of groups on LinkedIn might have a lot of members, but they're pretty much dead. No one's using them. We've been talking to LinkedIn. We've been asking them to do something about it. And they're slowly bringing it back. So there is some functionality in groups. 
and I do pick up clients through groups by going into and using them, but saying that's that's a, a longer subject uh, for the time we've got today. Um, Opal proof, I've already mentioned it once. Really powerful. Bad example, actually, I would say, actually, I could probably change the word from bad to average, but because I'm doing examples of bad and good throughout this slide deck, I've been looking at LinkedIn profiles for 15 years, okay? Uh, so I've probably topped over 100,000 profiles. During that time, I look at everything, you know, and virtually everyone has got some recommendations, but the average number of recommendations people have got is somewhere between three and five. And the real other part that people will look at, as you see, you see the last two, and below this is the see more button, is that, you know, most of them are between two and three years old. And what that means is someone is doing a search on LinkedIn and finds you and they go through your profile and you know that they're going to compare you with someone else. You get down the bottom and you've got very much like this person has, you know, two and, you know, they're over 10 years out of date. I could make the assumption they're currently not doing much good work. Therefore, I'm not particularly interested in them. Now, the interesting fact is that Astonishingly, if you get your uh, recommendation level up to double figures, yeah, the massive amount of 10, you're in the top 10% on LinkedIn because people just don't ask. And therefore, if you can have 10 recommendations up here and the two that show reasonably current, the likelihood is they're doing a comparison with someone else, I would suggest that you know, you're going to be better than nine out of 10 people. It's really worth considering. So yeah, ask for recommendations. You know, I know some, some people it's really easy, for others it's not. But I say you get into a routine, get into a habit of them. I personally ask for a minimum of eight every month because I know that I'm going to get two, okay? It's not because the others don't want to do it. They, can't, they, get, they forget their work is in their way. They, and I don't want to chase people for it. I ask my clients when I work with them for recommendations. That's the obvious thing to do. You know, you ask for testimonials through your website, just get into a routine. Now, if you don't work with, you know, a lot of people, if you work with only a few companies, you know, how many of those people that you talk to within that company have you asked for recommendation? You can do that. You can go in and because part of the process when you go through into, when you are push the ask for recommendation, it opens up uh, um, a nice little template and one of the things it asks you to choose the job for which you're asking for a testimonial for. So you can go into some historic stuff. So if you haven't got many testimonials or recommendations, or, not, or you're just starting in business and you haven't got many at all, you can go and ask people um, from past because when you get it back from them, the date you accept it is the date that appears here, okay? And also you lot, yeah. We're a bunch of networkers here. So we go out and we have networking meetings. Some of us might do presentations, um, breakout rooms, one-to-ones. Are you giving the other person va value? I suggest that you probably are. So from time to time, I will go and ask someone for a recommendation for you know, the information I've given them, even in a breakout room or you know, on a one-to-one. -one. People are more than happy to do that sort of thing. And like today, yeah. Fine, okay. Yeah, two or three of you might find that I ask for a recommendation for today's workshop when Ben sends me the list. Again, it's, it's, it's worthwhile asking the question because if you ask for eight, so the likelihood you're going to get two back, and therefore the two that are shown to the world are nice and recent. Now, the two things that people are a little bit concerned about is that it might not be that clever, the recommendation. Well, first of all, you need to be very clear when you send the uh, request across, because I think LinkedIn says, you know, uh, please would you recommend me? Very banal. Always add to it what it's for. So if I do send you one after this, it will be about this workshop today. Um, when it comes back, I have got the power, okay? Because I've got two things I can do. I can ask you to amend it it's not quite right or I haven't I haven't told you what it is that I want it for clearly enough or rather irritatingly there's a big grammatical error or a spelling mistake or someone a lady the other day she just missed a word out and the sentence didn't make sense once you put the word back in it it makes perfect sense 
Uh, we had a bit of a laugh about it. But also you'll see there's a little toggle switch which says show and hide. So you don't have to show the recommendation if you don't quite like it or you're getting better ones coming in at the time. Don't delete it, okay? Don't not accept it because it still contributes to that total. So if you're trying to get above 10 and you get one in, it's not so... Ooh, it still adds to the total if you keep it. You don't have to show it to the outside world. So if, say you've got the power, you can ask people to amend them. And actually, I spoke to a person yesterday um, who said that they, one of their recommendations is from someone um, from about three years ago, but they are reacquainted and they're reworking with them again. So again, there's no reason why you can't go back into that and just ask them for an update. So you can, if you can't ask a person twice, it will, LinkedIn will tell you this person's already recommended you. But you can go back in and ask them to amend it um, if you're doing some ongoing work with them. So recommendations is really powerful. It's social proof. And it could be the difference between you being in some business or not. So if you can get yours above 10 and get those two nice and recent, then as I say, you're probably in the top 10%. Therefore, the other potentially nine people you could be up against in a search, they're not going to compare with you. Because people are making assumptions on data on a screen. Because a lot of these people may never, they don't know you. I've never met Ben and what a lovely chap he is. They've just done a search and he's come up in it. So that's that's why it's really important. Social proof. Really, just before really we move on, Tony, Mark's asked a really, really great question. If, if you don't yeah. mind me jumping in. Um, is there any way to use a recommendation you get on Google and push it through to LinkedIn? No, no it has to be through the LinkedIn engine, unfortunately. Um, you have to ask. And you can only ask first line connections as well. Um, you can't okay. ask anyone else. So there's a templated box and you push that ask for recommendation. You can't fill it in yourself. Uh, you would need to ask them uh, to do it, unfortunately. No. I, just, just on that note, I have seen one thing that um, Mike Foster does very well. Um, and, and he puts those, uh, it probably wouldn't add to your SEO, but he puts you know his background with a, maybe relevant to Mark with a, a testimonial that somebody's written on Google and puts his branding, so-and-so said this. Is there a benefit to doing that? Yeah, I mean, I do it. I do it. Um, is in a post. So I will often post about, I've just received this wonderful testimonial. Um, and, you know, as long as it's not, you know, it's like a lot of things on posts. So let's, yeah, let's talk about posts for a second. We're going to come to it, but it's actually quite acceptable to do that. Um, whereas probably 10 years ago, it wasn't. But nowadays, on average, if you're going to be doing, let's just say 10 posts, as, may, as long as the main core, you know, sort of seven or eight of those are business related, and I always say to people, you know, make them informational and discussional, then the other two can be something else. They could be sales and marketing promotional. We're in business and we all understand that. As long as the person's not sending out every single post that's that way, because they're liable to be, yeah. Um, and also, you know, <laughs> those sweet little cat videos and things like that, which we kind of, again, used to be totally unacceptable. And now they're getting some good views. What I say to people is, yeah, I know they're getting good views because they are sort of, they're disruptive. They're, they're different from the norm. Um, people like it. If it's probably one in 10 of your posts is a bit, showing that you've got a personality, you're a character, you're not just a bloody robot. It's okay. But as I said to the person that did it and said, oh, I've got all these views and people got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, ultimately, yeah, I understand that. But did you get any business from it? no okay so it's right to do but actually a way of generating business it's no it's not gonna it's not gonna cut and one person said they're gonna picture put, put, put a picture of their cat on every single post they did i said yeah best of luck with that one um people will get pretty fed up with it really quickly um so yeah putting a testimonial out there branding it as, as mike does great idea do it every now and again because it is yeah it's promoting the fact yeah, it's giving you social proof in another area um so it's not a problem doing it and yeah but i just want people to understand that getting it in here because people may not see your posts certainly if they're not connected to you they're not going to see your posts easily but where they can come onto your you know anyone can come onto your profile anyone in the 757 million people can come on and look at it and by putting it in here they can see it they're not going to potentially see your posts so yeah do it by all means great way of doing it but as i say you know do get into the routine of looking at the recommendations as well. Thank you. Any other questions or shall I move on? So yeah, this, this is the other side of the coin. This is um, a friend of mine. I've even put a name in there. I haven't bothered deleting it. Um, 
Michelle Mills Porter is a, an international speaker um, who's got a great story to tell, but she's been asking for recommendations a very long time. Uh, and this, yeah, I mean, this this figure was, yeah, I mean, the slides, the slide is from last year, but he, I mean, she's nearly 600 now, but she's constantly doing, she's asking all the time, anytime she works with someone, she asks for it. So someone landing on her profile and sees that, oh my God, you know, it's fantastic. But also you notice, and you'll notice with mine, we also give, we give recommendations as well. We don't just take. And I say to people, the way I recommend people, yeah, if you ask me, and I've got good reason. So unlike the person the other day who um, I was doing something similar and they said, yeah, okay, I'll link in with you. And could I have one of your wonderful recommendations? And I said, no, why the hell would I recommend you? I've only just met you. I know nothing about you. So no, I recommend people um, because I know a bit about them. I've worked with them, etc. But actually most of my recommendations are given out of the blue, they land in your in in your notification that I'm, I've actually done that, and it's it's just I think it's nicer that people don't expect them to be you know they just arrive, and it's a nice little lip. Oh, God, that's nice. So, yes, but you can ask for them, um, and as I say, keep a balance because you know the one person um, like had sixty or seventy, so they yeah, we're asking, but they had given none. And I thought that's all a bit one way for me. I don't it doesn't sit with me, but that's just me. So yeah, some additional nuggets. Um, I cut this section down actually, but um, there are there were other things that I thought actually there's some stuff going on at the moment. So I'm, I've added in an extra slide literally this morning um, after Ben and I walked our dogs first thing, um, <laughs> which is the best way to start the day, isn't it, Ben? It's just yeah, absolutely chills you out. So yeah, how to search in the standard free version now. One of the things I get asked regularly is, should I upgrade to premium? Should I buy Sales Navigator? And my answer, um, certainly about the profile, professional, premium, no. Because most of the things that you get in the premium, I can show you how to do in the, in the free one. And this is one of them. Sales Navigator, it's a fantastic product. Okay, there's about an 80 odd pound a month fee to it. So if you're in a, working in a large enough company where you've got somebody who's dedicated to actually doing the searching, understands it and has the time of day to do it, then yeah, you're gonna get some really highly targeted information, et cetera. But for most of the people I deal with, they just haven't got the time or they haven't got the resources, but they still do a bit of prospecting. And as I say, and we mentioned it earlier, you know, someone puts a search in for your keywords, what's this gonna be? You know, so, you know, human resources, very big one i get asked for you know hr directors and all that on a regular regular basis um and i say well you put it in there uh put it in the search engine at the top of linkedin when they get comes up you then got to push the people button and then it gives you the results and you can see you know if you put the term human resources in there uh 13 million people well i've never met anyone who's got the capacity to sit and go through 13 million people um to check to see if they're someone that, that would have interested them um so what you need to do is the following. Yeah, all filters button. They've actually made it a button at long last. So for a long time, it just sat there as a bit of text and you didn't even know that it was clickable. But it's now clickable when they've, again, they've changed it slightly um, recently. Good old LinkedIn updating stuff without telling us. What you've got is you've got 10 basic filters. Well, as I say to them, even by using only three or filters, I can dramatically reduce uh, virtually any search down. Connections, yeah, well, you know your first line connections, so we haven't got to worry about that. Third line connections, well, unless you're a premium member, you can't talk to them. And when you do, you've got to use an in-mail. And believe me, in-mails are not that successful. First of all, the person's got to accept the in-mail. And actually, I liken it to a cold call. And the success rates are pretty similar, you know. I get an 8% um, take up of any emails that I use. And I only get as high as that because sometimes they are people I've met in a meeting like today, but they're a third line connection, but they, they've seen me and therefore they'll accept the uh, email. So I always select second, you know, because 
I know that's someone I can message. So even in standard, I get asked this from time to time. No, in standard, you can still talk to a second line connection. You can send them a message. There's no restriction. You have not got to go premium for that. You're based in the United Kingdom. So yeah, um, select that. And then there's a few others. So you can go into a certain industry. And then right at the bottom of it, there's a, a template which says, if you know the person name details, well, yeah, most of the time we don't know that person's details. So what I put in there is director, manager, owner. I want to talk to someone. I want to find someone who's got the ability to actually say yes to any proposals I put their way. So I don't want any, no disrespect to people. I don't want any junior staff. And then when I push that button, yeah, you'll be amazed that, you know, that 13 million can tumble. And as I say, I did one for someone the other day. I think we started at 2.6 million. And within 90 seconds, we had... 32 people, 32 people that fitted very loosely what they were after. And I say to them, actually the, the trick then, and again, this is a big warning, okay? Underlying note, don't go just randomly connecting with people, all right? Don't, so if you've got these 32 people come up and, and there is a connect button next to the name, just don't go bang, 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 connect. Even if you personalize it, which you must do anyway, Never send a connection request without it being personalised, unless you're in the room with the person at the time they're expecting it. Because something goes on, and I'm going to go live at the end of this and just show you what that is, because it's, it's quite, it's very much something that's happening a lot at the moment in time. But yeah, I can I can turn very large searches into really small numbers of targeted. I look at the people's profiles, so I don't click connect, I click on their profiles, go and look at them, and I just see if they're someone that I would want to connect with. And I send them a message um and my message uh, feel free to plagiarize this but put it in your own words is around hi i've just done a highly targeted search on linkedin you come up in the top 32 fancy a chat keep it very loose but because i've used the information i get oh they're curious to find out but they're also their ego has been struck oh i'm on the top 32 on linkedin ooh, ooh. so i get people respond to that and they ask me how i do it i tell them then they're only a conversation with me and yes, I've turned some of those people into clients. So it's definitely a well, well worth way doing these things. Um, settings. Yeah. When you go onto LinkedIn and you go up to the top and you look at the me and you click on the button and you go, you know, view profile, go down a couple more and you'll see that there are profiles and settings. Go and have a look in the profiles and settings, mainly around the fact that it can change the way LinkedIn works for you. Now, there are various different tabs. And I say to people, spend a good 20, 30 minutes having a good old delve around in there. In there, you can do a few things. Yeah, you can look at some of the details that you've got logged in there. Go and have a look at the email addresses that you've got on LinkedIn. Have you got access to them all? Because if you haven't, get rid of them. Because if LinkedIn has a hiccup and defaults to the original email, like if my original email was in 2006, the company does not even exist. I have no access to that email. I could be in trouble. So get rid of them. You can put your phone number in there. So many people don't have their phone numbers. Do you not want to be called? Fine, if you don't, leave it out. But put it in there so people can actually contact you. There are ways so here, you know, profile viewing options. Um, now and again, you can have a look at who's viewed my profile and you'll see an anonymous LinkedIn member. You think, oh, God, who's that? Um, it annoys. But you can do it yourself. You go into this profile viewing options. The standard option is, yeah, your headshot on those 220 characters I mentioned earlier. There's an interim one which gives a rough idea of that you're a coach in Thames Valley. Then there's an anonymous member at the bottom. I never use it. But I say to people, if you are doing some market research on a direct competitor and you don't want them to know, mm -hmm. And obviously, this is probably something you want to do. As soon as you finish being furtive, turn it off. Because while you're in anonymous mode, some of the functionality on LinkedIn stops. For example, who's viewed my profile? If you look at who's viewed my profile and it's ghosted to you, yeah, you're in anonymous mode. It's part of the tip to tap. So have a look at that. Do you want your connections visible to the outside world? Your connections can see your connections. Last year, because I'm connecting to people I haven't physically met, might have met them for five minutes in a networking group. Um, a couple of them spam some of my network. So I've turned it off so they can't. 
there are little things in there like that so you can go and tailor you know so if your url for instance your vanity url which is right at the top when you view your own profile has got a load of spurious numbers and letters after it you can go and change it so yeah spend some time going through the settings and privacy it would just enhance the way uh, that you go about it it's definitely worth spending that time And yeah, I work with clients now. You, some of you will have heard of the infamous SSI score, okay? Um, some LinkedIn trainers base the whole business on the SSI score. I actually know it's faulty because I actually have uh, someone who worked with LinkedIn who's part of my network who I work with quite closely. And the trouble with the SSI score is that you're never going to get 100 unless you buy Sales Navigator. So again, it's LinkedIn trying to get you to spend money with them because part of it is that you'd have to have Sales Navigator to do it. So you probably, as a normal person, you're never gonna get much more than 83 as an SSI score. But also every now and again, they change it. And you'll notice if you do monitor it, that your score went down twice recently. There's no reason for it. But the biggest thing for me is that, yeah, I mean, I'm a LinkedIn trainer. I think I'm 79 or 80, you know, but I know people when I've looked at their profiles and their activity, who also crept up to sort of high 60s or 70s. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. It is faulty, it is broken. Never, ever hang on the SSI score. Some of you might remember clout from the old days. Um, we all looked at our clout scores. We had this little graph going across and it went up and down during the day. And, you know, it was kind of, yeah, it's all a bit vanity, you know. Um, but this one actually works really well. Dashboard. If you've got the standard, and again, we'll come to this in a minute, you've got a standard LinkedIn profile set up um, just below. And again, if you've got the featured, just below your about all your featured section and before your activity is a dashboard, which looks very much like this. And I say to people, go and have a look. Ignore the first number because who's viewed my profile is based on 90 days. Someone that viewed my profile 90 days ago is irrelevant to me. Um, post views, well, that depends on when I posted it. But the search appearances has some tight metrics around it. Yeah, that number you can actually click on. Okay, you click on it, it opens up, opens up a new page. It tells you that these searches were done in a certain time period, basically this afternoon. So Thursday afternoon, UK time, that number will change every week. It then gives you a, a list of some of the companies that put the searches in that found you. But more importantly, just by that, it gives you a breakdown of the top job titles. So for me, if it's founder, owner, you know, partner level, yeah, great, because those are the sort of people that, that uh, buy my services. If it's recruiters and salespeople and tire kickers, mm, yeah, maybe not so good. So I say to people, you know, 313 searches means in a five day working period, which is what it is, 62 people a day are finding me in searches. And I do appreciate that. Not everyone is going to be interested. There's going to be some tire kickers in there. But I know that I've moved the percentage that probably 75% of people are interested in what I do. So if that sort of number of people find me in day in searches, yeah, as long as I do certain things, this is now giving me leads on a regular, regular basis. So have a look at your search experience. I'm going to go in there, see who's looking. And if the number's low, you know, one of my strap lines, as you may have heard, is be seen, be engaged, or be anonymous. Well, this is an indication. If that is somewhere like 50 and half of those people are just tire kickers. That's 25 people. That's five people a day at finding your searches. But I'm being found in 50 plus. Guess who's getting the most opportunities here? Yeah. So it's something, it's a good metric to look at, is basically what I'm saying. Um, and I thought I'd touch on some news. Okay. What is going on in the wonderful world of LinkedIn at this moment in time? Creator mode. Okay. Um, anybody got it? Put it in the chat room if you have. It'll be interesting to see how many people from the room has actually got creator mode. Anyone only up to it, Ben? Not as of yet, no. Oh, Mike Foster has got creator mode. Tracy Smart doesn't have creator mode. It's looking like just Mike Foster. Okay, how many people are in the room? And Warren isn't sure. Uh, huh. 17. 17. So one person out of 17, well, two, including me, uh, have got creator mode. I suggest there's probably two or three of you who've got it. You just don't know. And this is because good old LinkedIn have brought it in and not told you about it. How to find it? Yeah, go back to your dashboard, but 
possibly the best way is looking on your phone. And also be aware that the, um, the phone app and the desktop are not the same, okay? There are big differences. On your phone, you'll see the dashboard and it just says creator mode off. And oh, you've got it. Once you turn it on, what it allows you to do is the following. First thing it says um, is it wants to create some hashtags. It wants you to create five hashtags, which then go up the top in your headline. It's then, um, there's a few things it does, but when you see it, it's reordered your sections. You'll find that your featured section, which we talked about earlier, so if you haven't got it, you're missing out there, but also your activity section are now moved to the top. The about section has moved down. The, um, the activity section is increased. There's probably six activity, activity shown. So it's very much about the activity side. But also, if you go and look at mine, when you click on my profile, you'll notice a little video plays where my headshot is for three seconds and disappears. You go onto my headshot and click on it, and you have the opportunity then to watch the full 30 second video with audio. Yeah, there's a video behind that. So this is they call they're calling cover story. Um, and yeah, you can then record a 30 second video and have it up there. It is a mode, okay? So you know, it is on or off. I have to say I've had it for about a month. I haven't made a decision whether I like it or not. I would rather it went back to the old days where I could just rearrange the sections to suit myself personally. I quite like the video, but I don't, I don't know. But so, yeah, I'm sure that if anyone, if people look today, you'll find there's going to be one or two people in the room that got it. They just didn't know they had it. Um, and for the rest of you, it's coming. But like everything with LinkedIn, with 750 million plus accounts, it does take a little bit of time for them to roll things out. But yeah, when you get it, have a little play around with it. But yeah, it is a mode you can. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. Um, I think I might have got it on the moment in time purely because I've been showing people that it's there. I'm not convinced. But again, it's something new and it's something that uh, you may not have heard of before. Newsletters. Again, no, you haven't got it. All right. So don't go looking for it. But this is something that's coming. Uh, it's coming into LinkedIn. It will arrive in the article section. And when you go to the article section on the top left hand side, there's a little sub menu now with the drop down. And all of a sudden, you're again, you won't get told about it. All of a sudden, you'll see that newsletters is an option and there will be a template in there. I've got a couple of friends of mine that are beta testing it for LinkedIn. So I get copies of it on a regular basis. I quite like it. It's nicely laid out, it's a nice structure. Um, so when I get it, I'll be adopting it. But I don't know when. I know what's coming on LinkedIn. I can never tell you exactly when. I'm never surprised when it lands because I was expecting it. I just didn't know what day it's going to arrive. So when we had the LinkedIn stories appear on the app again, not the desktop, I knew it was coming. But again, um, I think that was very much a fad. I don't use it. Not a lot of people do. So they do updates. But again, they're so frustrating that they don't tell you uh, about it in advance. Yeah, I, I usually play a game, but I've decided not to today. Um, yeah, LinkedIn have deleted 37 million accounts recently. Yeah, I, it's not, that's, not a, that's not an error. That is true, 37 million accounts. So they did grow up to over 765 million. But they've fallen back. But as they grow at three a second, they're going back up to that. Why did they delete them? Well, hopefully no one in this room uh, has been put in LinkedIn jail. But from time to time, people do. Um, it's because they're contravening the user terms. So when we all joined LinkedIn, whenever, how many ever years ago, how many of us looked at those user terms before we ticked the box? Well, nobody, no one reads the bloody things. Pages are waffle. But LinkedIn are now using this as reasons to close accounts. So of that 37 million, it's a mixture of duplicate. It's fake. But the main thing is, it's people that are using third party software, okay? Third party software has always been a no-no on LinkedIn. They kind of used to sort of uh, send you a message and say, you know, would you please stop using blah, blah, blah. Um, they froze your account for five days or something and then you were you're released from LinkedIn jail and you got back on with it. They're now saying, well, if you continue to do it, goodbye. Now, it says in there you shouldn't use it. What they're trying to do, and I completely agree with it, they are trying to stop these people who are just mass sending out connection requests every day, just trying to build. There is a 30,000 limit on LinkedIn, but people just sending, 
you can see them. You you'll get them. You know, it's just so annoying. You know, so they've actually capped it. Um, the connection request is capped at one hundred per week now. Okay, I don't talk to a hundred people a week to actually invite them to connect with me, because one of the other rules on LinkedIn, and this is one very loose, and we none of us adhere to it is that you shouldn't connect with people you don't know. Well, that's out of bollocks, really. Um, excuse my French ladies. But yeah, they've capped it at 100. And I think that's sensible. So, you know, um, I don't think I ever send out more than about 50 a week if I've been at some big events and I've met lots of people. But that's a quite sensible thing. So actually, people that are using third-party software will find that um, the people that are giving it to you or the agencies that are using it will all of a sudden find that they can't because there's restrictions in place. Um, you'll be approached by certain people uh, saying that you know, they've got a super sophisticated AI driven um, bit of software that's a, a Chrome extension that you know, won't get spotted it will, it's owned by Microsoft they're not stupid, you might get away over a certain length of time so what they're looking for is people to use LinkedIn properly you know connect with people that you've met okay it might only have been two or three minutes in a breakout room but at least you've had some sort of conversation. And, you know, I, I've had a, a, a message through yesterday from someone that um, I haven't met. They were at the same meeting as me. And the first thing was, this is a list of all my pricing. <laughs> yeah, they, they got told uh, in uncertain terms what they could do with it. It's not professional. It's not the way you go about things. But yeah, LinkedIn are changing all the time. The other big thing that's going on at the moment, and I can't show you any information at this moment in time because I don't have it, is we are looking at the algorithm change. Yeah, the six monthly algorithm change is currently being uh, revised. It's already affecting certain things. So you may see in some of your posts, uh, there's a, link, a comment next to it says, you know, why don't you share this? Which is interesting because ultimately the previous algorithm said that if you share something on LinkedIn, they see it as duplicate content. Therefore, they will reduce your reach. So there you go. That's some of the new stuff that's happening at the moment in time. It's just turned 11 o'clock. Obviously, we need to allow some time for questions and answers. So I'm going to close this presentation down and uh, yeah, fire away. Let's uh, stop sharing my screen and take the spotlight off me. And yeah, I'm now open to um, as many questions as possible. I'll try and answer them all. Um, if for some reason I don't know the answer, my God, I will be trying to find out because I need to know. <laughs>